Hello and good day everyone. I am a third year student from Faculty of Forestry and Environment, University Putra Malaysia. In this video, I will share about life cycle assessment in Chapter 2, Goal and Scope Definition, Part 1. Today, I will share with you guys about goal definition and scope, including product system, technical system, cutoff criteria and demarcation towards system surrounding, geographical system boundary, and lastly, temporal system boundary, time horizon. Oh, before I start, I have to tell you that there will be a quiz at the end of this video. So sit down and pay your attention. The first one, goal definition. The goal definition is a declaration made by the organization, such as companies, industry or trade associations, environmental offices, NGOs, etc., commissioning an LCA, by providing an explanation to the following. Range of application, for example, what is the objective of the study? Interest of realization, such as why is an LCA study conducted? Target groups, for whom will an LCA study be conducted? Publication or other accessibility for the public, a comparative assertions intended in the study. The depth and accuracy of the study have to be considered during the goal definition. The fundamental standard ISO 14040 explicitly points out that the goal definition Now we moving on to the second subtopics which is scope. The first one, product system. A product system is best described in a system flowchart. In a system flowchart, unit processes and their interrelations are usually represented by boxes. The entire, often very complex, pattern reminds of a tree and is therefore often called a product tree. Since an essentially linear system definition is aimed at, branches occur only at the boxes but no network. In LCA, all input in the product system, even though the very small inputs must be taken into consideration in LCIA. Because, compared to mass, very small emissions can nevertheless show large effects. Within comparative LCAs, large parts of the life cycle may be emitted in principle if they match accurately in all systems compared. For example, the construction elements on the right of the system boundary, screws, Teflon foil, fittings, etc., are not considered. This is adequate, if, for instance, different windows, PVC, wood or aluminium windows, are to be compared with each other and if these construction elements are used similarly in all variants regarded. A precise description and quantification of material and energy flow is conducted in the stage, Life Cycle Inventory Analysis, LCI. Interesting, right? I hope you still bear with me. Okay, let's proceed. Next, we will cover the technical system boundary, divided into two. Cut-off criteria and demarcation towards system surrounding. Cut-off criteria. The specification of system boundaries is one of the most important steps in an LCA. The necessity for cut-off criteria, regulating the exclusion of insignificant inputs into the product system ISO 1404410, states three cut-off criteria applied for the entire product system as well as for individual unit processes which are mass, energy, and environmental relevance. This is the example of the cut-off criteria which is application of the cut-off criteria, mass, and energy. And this one is application of cutoff criteria, the 5% rule. Okay, next in the technical system boundary is demarcation towards system surrounding. The system surrounding is composed by the ecosphere, which is the environment, plus the large remainder of the technosphere not included in the analysis. Here is an example of system boundary of the inventory modified according to the Society of Environmental Toxicology and Chemistry, SETAC, in 1991. The system under examination receives input from the system surrounding and delivers output to it. The following inputs from the environment are to be considered. All processes necessary for the extraction of raw materials, mining industry, oil production, forestry, etc 
belong to the investigated system, exploitation of raw materials. In addition, inputs which, due to the cutoff criteria, are not traced over their entire life cycle must be considered or we call them miscellaneous. These inputs may be pre-products, ancillary material or lubricant produced in the remainder of technosphere not included into the system under study. The entry, energy, on the input side should actually be named, energy raw materials, because the energy is produced from fossil, nuclear and regenerating raw materials. Exceptions are solar energy, potential energy of water, hydropower, and kinetic energy of wind, wind power. The energy supply, for example, in power stations, is within the system boundary. Outputs, such as usable products and releases into the environment, are delivered to the system's surroundings. The investigated product in the center of the system remains within the system boundary. Usable products are the product under study, co-products and secondary raw materials, which remain in the technosphere. Material emissions are delivered into the ecosphere by wastewater and exhaust air. The plants for wastewater treatment and exhaust air purification are within the system boundary. The allocation of solid wastes, landfill, has in former times occasionally been rated as releases into soil, which means they would leave the system. Today, controlled landfills are regarded as part of the technosphere and thus lie within the system boundaries. Only degassing and contamination of the groundwater due to leaky landfills are regarded as outputs into the environment. For waste incineration, analogous considerations apply. In the early days of LCA, proto elkas the sum of solid wastes has been an important aggregated parameter of the inventory. Other emissions can be radiation, biological releases, noise and similar non-chemical emissions. The handling of co-products and secondary raw materials requires special attention during the definition of the system boundary. Co-products during a chemical synthesis, or any other production process, besides the desired output within the examined product system, further useful products, materials or substances may be generated and covered by the generic term co-products. In particular, co-products are frequently formed in the chemical industry, but agriculture and its downstream industries are known for their co-product problem as well. Thus, for example, with the production of grain, straw is produced as a co-product that is transferred as usable product to the system surrounding it. In this case, environmental loads of the processes must be allocated, according to defined rules, both to the examined product and the co-product. Co-products can play a role in different unit processes of a product tree. Secondary raw material non-directly usable by products are usually called residual material. Depending upon the recycling potential, distinction is drawn between secondary raw materials, after cleaning or other processing, and wastes. Secondary raw materials that are gained from waste for reutilization leave the system and are used as input in other product systems. For example, scrap, waste paper, waste glass, plastic wastes, etc. Recycling of materials, which lead to new products, where the materials thus become parts of other systems, is called open-loop recycling. The respective secondary raw materials as I mentioned before leave the product system under study, of which where they are the residual material, as respective wastes for reutilization. Re Within the system boundaries remain materials in those recycling processes that lead back to the same product, the one under investigation, that is, it remains in the product system we called it is closed loop recycling. Moreover, in the case of product reuse, these materials remain in the investigated system, usually after cleaning. For examples, the refeed of plastic shreds, punching, cutting off, and so on, into the extruder. A good example of reuse is the refilling of returnable bottles. Rules to be applied for allocation shall already be specified within the goal and scope definition, if not avoidance of allocation, for example, by system expansion, becomes compulsory in a specific case. The system boundary requires further explanations, the most important concern being the geographical and temporal system boundary. 
Next we will be moving on to the geographical system boundary. The geographical system boundary results from the economic context and from the product definition. Firstly, is the concerned special product manufactured in factory A, at site B, and so on, or a group of very similar products manufactured in multiple factories all over places. Similar considerations are valid for agricultural products, services, and so on. Second, even if a relatively close framework is selected, for example, production and sales in only one country, the geographical system boundary always has extensions beyond the selected range, because certain raw materials may be missing in the concerned country and thus have to be imported. Therefore, pollution of the environment also occurs in the countries of origin and in transportation from these. For export products, it must be noted that transportation, use and disposal predominantly take place in other countries. The international distribution of tasks in the context of progressive globalization of the world economy, supplier, must also be considered within the geographical system boundary. Third, in LCIA, global effects are considered for some impact categories such as climate change, greenhouse effect, stratospheric ozone depletion, while for others regional or local effects like eutrophication potential are considered. Local boundaries can, however, be clearly assigned only in rare cases, for instance, if a special product is manufactured in one factory only. In this case, at least one point in the life cycle can unambiguously be assigned geographically. Something similar is valid in agriculture if the farming region can be determined. Altogether, the definition of the geographical system boundary is straightforward, it is a question of data availability. Commodities, e.g. metals, mass plastics, chemicals of very large production volume, often do not reveal their origin. In these cases, a regional allocation of impacts is difficult, if not impossible. Now the last subtopic for this video, temporal system boundary, time horizon. Hanging there, buddy. The temporal system boundary is more difficult to define than the geographical boundary. The minimum specification to the system boundary time is a year of reference or another time period for data acquisition. For long-lived products, a determined or estimated lifetime or time of use provides a boundary shifted into the future of the inventory, disposal or reuse will only occur in the future. Accordingly, the modeling of these life cycle phases is difficult and uncertain. For long, those problems with time have not been sufficiently considered in LCA research. This did not play a role as long as predominantly short-lived products were examined such as packaging. Problems related to time became evident when LCAs of building materials, buildings and other long-lived products were carried out. How may LCA experts know which methods need to be used? On the side of impact assessment, which are affected by product systems, are to be considered. Today, it is not yet clear how time can be better integrated into LCA without making the method too complicated. Some impact categories require the specification of a time horizon for the selection of suitable characterization factors, with the greenhouse effect, for example, usually a time horizon of 100A is assumed. Longer time horizons are very uncertain because of our total ignorance of the far future, but are, however, often demanded for reasons of justice towards coming generations. There is a close link to the question whether negative effects on the environment, in analogy to financial computations, may be discounted. I hope you guys understand what I have shared with you. And now, I want to test you guys just like I said in the beginning of the video because now is quiz time. Okay, first one. A declaration made by the organization commissioning an LCA is the goal definition. True or false? Yes, you are right. It is true. Next, is the product system best described in the form of flowchart or mind map? Yes. You are right. Product system is best described in the form of a flowchart. This the end of this video. Thank you for your attention and ear for listen and watch this video. 
We will continue this chapter in this next video. Till we meet again. Bye and have a good day everyone.